It's not a surprise that if you want to make money, a lot of it, you cannot simply rely on your job. That paycheck you get at the end of every month isn't enough to cover all of your expenses. No wonder why you get into a debt every now and then. But honestly, there aren't many options that you see in front of you. I mean, you're not born into some kind of a royal family where you're showered with cash. You did not get the chance to go to a prestige business school and the financial world seems so complicated to you that it's not for you at all. So it's absolutely normal to feel lost. You haven't been taught to make money independently other than working for someone else. That's why here in this video, we'll take a look at some of the principles that if you understand, you will most likely find your path to financial independence. Let's make one thing clear, no matter how great is your job, it will never get you to financial freedom because you are paid according to the hours you work. But the problem is that there is absolutely no way to have more than 24 hours a day. So if you try to get a higher paying job, your income will still be relatively limited. Therefore, looking for a better job isn't really the best option. Just a little disclaimer here, of course get a better job if you can. But the point is, in the long run, it's not the best strategy to become financially free. Then the question is, what should you do? Well, my dear friend, make someone else work for you, like your money for example. For most people, money is this magical tool that they can use to buy whatever they want. But not everyone looks at money like that, because money can be an employee who will work for you day and night just to make you even more money. As weird as it sounds, it's the reality. In other words, it's known as investing, which word you probably already heard. That's why the gap between the rich and the poor is constantly increasing. The more money rich people make, the more they invest. In fact, that's how most of them started initially. They first invested a little bit since that's all what they could afford. And as their income grew, their ability to invest also grew. It's exactly like running a business. You guide your employees to come up with a certain product or provide a certain service that will generate income. But in this case, your employees are your money whom you have to manage. Usually, when people think about investing, we imagine buying an asset like an ounce of gold for example, because over time the price of the gold usually increases. But the problem is that it doesn't really produce anything over time, it just stays the way it is and that's why it's not an efficient way to invest. No wonder they are known as unproductive assets. On the other hand, there are productive assets like a small business for example. You buy the business and at the end of the year, you still have got the business but also the money that it has been generating over time. Of course, there could be lots of other examples like a house if you rent it out, you will have a cash flow every month or a farm that produces crops. The general idea is that you should buy something that will at least keep its value and at the same time produces something that could be turned into an income. But not everyone can afford that. Buying even a small house or a business costs a lot of money. Where will I get that? Even if I sleep in the streets and do not eat or drink anything and save every single penny of my income for the entire year, which is pretty much impossible, I still won't be able to buy a little tiny house. Well, that's why we have a place called stock market. Since businesses is worth millions if not billions of dollars, they are divided into little stocks that almost anyone can afford them. Owning a stock is like owning a little piece of the company and the company will share with you a tiny part of its income every year. In other words, the more stocks you own, the more dividends you will be paid. Of course, it's not as easy as it sounds. So make sure you learn first how the stock market works before you throw your money in. Otherwise, you'll find yourself broke in no time. But that's a perfect example of how you can make your money work for you. You should not necessarily get into the stock market. You can get creative and try something absolutely different. I remember a friend of mine once started buying containers and renting them out to companies, people and whoever needs them. They don't cost much, but at the same time it's possible to rent them out for a good sum of money if you know how to do that. In summary, focus on building more streams of income. When you spend your money on getting a productive asset, you will have a constant flow of money. It might not be much in the beginning, but with each extra stream of income, you will have more opportunities to buy more productive assets. And now it's your turn. What do you think is the best investment you can make? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, hit the like button if you have enjoyed this video. And if you don't want to miss the next video, then hit the subscribe button and the bell besides it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.